pronghorn is indigenous to North America and exclusively to North America. It's a very, very unique animal. Or actually, when you see one in the wild and you're looking at them through the binoculars, uh, a very, very handsome animal. Hunting antelope, I think, is one of the potentially easier species. And often, antelope will be the second or third species that a bow hunter will take. It was my first uh, big game animal, other than the whitetail that I took. Uh, the hunt costs aren't very expensive because there's there's a lot of them to go around and a lot of opportunities. Uh, most of the pronghorns that people take with a bow are over water holes. I've taken two with a bow, and both of them were on water holes. And you know, it's 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 a neat thing to see him come in, but it's. Uh, it's somewhat uneventful compared to the decoy deal or a spot and stalk. The way I hunted my pronghorn was the old-fashioned way. You set up a Mel Dutton decoy, dig in uh, basically a pit blind along the edge of a, a stock tank or a watering hole in the middle of a big sagebrush pasture, and you sit and wait. I think we'll go start up at Blue Gravel here because that's probably our best bet to go look at some bucks and kind of look at where the best water holes are. We uh, We've had a really wet summer and spring, and a lot of the ponds that we put bentonite on last year that we didn't expect being full this year have filled up already, so it's gonna be a little bit tough hunting because of all the water. You know, it's a lot easier when you antelope hunt if you can hunt over isolated water. Take a look at that second buck, not the one on the left, but the second one in. Looks like there's five or six shooter bucks in there and they're, they're really using that water hole down there. We probably could go down and build us a blind, you know, dig out in the side of that dam right underneath that big chunk of sage. It uh, looks like it'd be really good. There must be about 30 antelope in this draw. Just beautiful markings on their face, just a sleek coat. A uh, pronghorn is the fastest four-legged mammal in North America, and they can run 60 mile an hour in stretches. Pronghorn hunting is a type of hunting that you can be a little bit laid back. It's something that you can get up in the morning at six and have breakfast and go out and practice your bow a few shots and get in the truck and drive into the ranch and down into your area, set up your decoy, get situated, get in your blind, get a good book out or a magazine and just start reading and read a page and then glass. Quarter to seven. The sun's already up. But it's gonna be a hot day, about 90 or so. Which means these pronghorns are gonna have to come in here and get a drink about 11 or 12. And then again about four or five. The hotter the day, the better our chances over these water holes. Got the decoy out. It's 26th of August, pronghorn season in Colorado. It's a good idea to range from your blind where your shooting position is, different spots in the water hole, so you know about how far it is. I just took a practice shot at 33 yards to the other side of the water hole. It's only 24 over here, and it's 38 over there. It can make a big difference depending on where a pronghorn comes in. It's a good line. 
We had a, a specific water hole that we had been setting out for three or four days and really hadn't had any action, but we knew it was hot. There were big tracks on it, and we had seen big pronghorns in the area, so we knew it was just a matter of time. We'd had a little bit of rain. These animals don't have to water as much, or there's little puddles here or there. They don't end, end up having to come into the big stock tank to drink, and we thought that was the case, and so we rode it out and we stayed in that one area because we thought it was a good place. Well, finally, uh, about the middle of the day, which is when they usually come in, I spot this big pronghorn coming over the top of the hill, and he just basically works right down slow and easy through all the sagebrush. I had a Mel Dutton decoy set up behind me, kind of to the left, and we had the perfect setup. Usually, when you're hunting pronghorns in that late summer watering hole pattern, you're going to find that the heat of the day is going to be really warm and a lot of the thermals are going to carry your scent up. So uh, it, it is conducive even in lower areas for you to have success unless the wind's blowing directly at the area that you need to shoot at. They have razor sharp vision, so they're not going to miss much. Uh, if you're moving, they're going to see you. And if they see you, they're going to watch you. And if they watch you, you're probably not going to get close. He went right in a water hole. Unbelievable. That decoy made all the difference. Pronghorn. Oh, wow. He's beautiful. It took him a long time of feeding, of working around, of watching that decoy to get into position. I thought he was going to come down on this side of the water hole, but he didn't. He worked around, we had perfect wind, it was hot today. He came right in. He jumped right as the bowstring fired, and he's mine. Yeah! Colorado. When you're doing television, it's not really the way you like to see it end. You'd like to see the arrow pass through on the perfect shot and for him to run off, and then you blood trail him and find him. And in fact, everything happened right there. He string jumps, he gets hit in a bad spot, but it's a good spot because he goes down uh, right there. But I had to eventually walk out in the water and fish him out in order to finish and do the hero shot on that hunt. But it was it was an exciting hunt. Heath Painter was my cameraman on that. It's one of the, I think, third or fourth oh, hunt man. I ever did early in my career. It took you forever to get in here. <laughs>